My name is Tate Bentley and this is my persuasive speech. You may have been walking down the road or down the street or driving in your car and seen some sort of graffiti posted on a train car, side of a wall, side of a building, place of business, anything like that. And you first come to think, oh wow, they're, they're vandalizing that place, but that's really not always the case. And uh, actually most graffiti can be used for self-expression in an art form. It has been widely used to depict forms of self-expression and art and it's con it's considered vandalism to many people but that's not the intention in most cases nowadays many famous murals have been made by using graffiti and uh, memorials murals for people who have passed away or to memorize and commemorate someone it, and it has a uh, positive influence on many people and cultures start off with uh graffiti has been around for many many years i mean it could be dated back all the way to early 20th century. It can also be dated all the way back to the Roman times. And uh, according to Wide Wall magazines, these two forms of art, which is graffiti and street art, are showing up in the early 20th century, so early 1900s, and other and derived from other Roman ruins back in uh, the earlier ages. And it is derived from the Italian word graffio, which means scratch and, inci and incised inscriptions. Markings have been found in ancient Roman ruins, Mayan civilizations, Spain, and English churches in the 16th century as well. Even some hieroglyphics can be considered a form of graffiti because it was painted on rocks and walls back in the very old days. And like I stated before, many people, they, they get a bad, bad vibe from graffiti and street art and stuff like that. And uh, it does have its roots of being gang affiliated and stuff like that. And gangs would use graffiti to claim territories in bigger cities and in uh, certain areas of those cities. So people have a negative like outlook on most graffiti and street art, but people thought the graffiti was just vandalism and making places look bad. And uh, although graffiti and street art is depicted poorly by most people, it has a lot of positive effects nowadays and is used widely to commemorate people and being used as murals and stuff like that. They, uh, it really does have a good depiction of some people's self-expression in forms of art, and it actually is used in a lot of awesome art pieces. And uh, there are many commemorative murals depicted through the use of graffiti and street art, and uh, some examples of those are the U.S. Works Progress Administration Federal Art Project. They, during the Great Depression, they used graffiti and street art to depict murals and commemorate people who uh, were struggling through the Great Depression and they used it as kind of a message and symbolism to the people like struggling during that time and also the work of Diego Rivera in Mexico and some of the, the cities in Mexico he would do street art and graffiti to commemorate um, people who had lived there and like the murals of these artists great works graffiti can beautify a neighborhood and speak to the interests of a specific community so in different communities around the US, like in maybe Los Angeles or New York or some of the major cities, you will see a lot of graffiti everywhere, whether it's uh, a picture of someone, like a painting of someone or a saying or something like that. Graffiti is widely, widely used nowadays and you almost see it everywhere you go. Um, there are some, there are many actually graffiti murals in Hispanic neighborhoods across the US and it's consider, they consider it urban art. So people will use their self-expression and they will paint on the walls and sides of businesses and on train cars and stuff like that. And I know that a lot of people say it's like deteriorating a business or vandalizing a business, but in most cases, people do get permission to use their art and their form of self-expression on the sides of these buildings to send a positive message and a good message. And uh, graffiti became notoriously prominent in New York City in the late 20th century and large elaborate multicolored graffiti created with spray paint on building walls and subway cars became um, the definition of urban landscape for most people. So like it was very popular in those bigger cities and people would use it, like I said many times before, for their self-expression and stuff like that. And uh, the art community slowly, widely started to accept those people who use street art and graffiti as their expression, as their like as their community and um, typically they would like disown them at first because people were using it for gang affiliation but they started to accept them and uh, actually made it one of the styles that have been 
presented in art galleries and stuff like that. And they, they really tie in that self, and they keep, I keep saying self-expression because it's a form for people who are not as known to create such a wide, like a big mural or like a big message on the side of a wall. And it's, it's eye catching. It really is that you, I mean, you don't sit there and see graffiti and you don't notice it. You always notice it when you see it. Um, some artists such as Keith Haring and Jean Michael Basquait became famous for their recognition in the street art community and were represented in top galleries for their works. And uh, even in our small town of Statesville, you can see it um, over by Pelican Snowballs. There's the, the big mural of Prince. And I think they had another one up there at some point, but um, it, that can be found downtown and many other places in Statesville. And um, it's, it's very different nowadays than it was back in the 1920s. I mean, when um, it was back in the 20s, I mean, it first started, as, like I said earlier, as a gang affiliation, but it's really evolved over time. And uh, they're mostly nowadays made into murals rather than the old way of depicting the gang activity back in the early 20th century. And many artists nowadays are getting recognized for their street art and their urban uh, culture and, their, and the beautiful pieces that are made because most of those pieces take hours and, or days even to complete. And I mean, it's just like, it's really beautiful, most of them. Um, my point really being is that not all graffiti and street art is vandalism nowadays. I mean, it's everyone, they, their first, you know, impression of like the graffiti is like, oh, it's vandalism or it makes it look bad or whatever. But people really put time and effort into the community of street art and like urban street art to uh, make these pieces and commemorate people. And uh, although people could typically ne negatively depict these art forms, it is worth taking into consideration the actual positive impact it has. It It's used nowadays to send a message. I mean, as with all the events happening recently, there have, there have been many people who commemorate the people who have lost their lives or who have been discriminated against, and uh, they use it as a form of street art to paint a picture liter literally and um, like, metaphorically as well. So um, both these forms of art, the street art and graffiti are becoming more widely accepted because they show those people's self-expression and the honor that they give to those people. And uh, yeah, so thank you for uh, listening.